Hi, I'm James Bielov at the Future Investor Clubs of America uh, Executive Program for Financial Training. And I made a, a presentation about candlestick charts. Uh, first, I have to talk about the bulls and the bears. Bulls are the people who buy and the bears are the people who sell. Really, they're all the same people. You can't just buy and not ever sell. So basically, um, stocks go up because people think they'll go up and they buy them. And when, that's the bears. And when the, I mean the bulls. When the bears, the bears don't have confidence in stocks, so they sell the stock and that makes it go down. So you might think, oh, I'll sell this stock a lot so it'll go down and then I'll buy it again. But that's uh, market manipulation. The SEC is going to come after you. Don't do that. Uh, the, structure, the structure of candlesticks. So I got examples of the down and up candlesticks. They have three main parts, the lower shadow, upper shadow, and real body. So the real body goes from the open to the close. Um, which one is on top depends on the color. The uh, upper shadow extends from the top of the real body up to the high of the entire session. And the lower shadow extends from the bottom to the low of the entire session. Uh, intensity. So this is basically versus, uh, long versus short candlestick graphs. If you have a short candlestick, that means the difference between the open and the close is small. So it's not as intense. But if it's really big, it means the difference between the open and close is a lot. The price changed a lot during the session, so that's really intense. Uh, Marubozu candlesticks are when there's no shadow. So that means the shadows, they're not really not there. They're just lining up with the open and close. So here, uh, the close is, um, it opens here and closes here on the white candlesticks. So that would mean that it started the session with the very lowest possible price, well, not possible, but during the session, and then it, it ended at the very high price. So that means the buyers control the price during the whole session. And the inverse is true for the black market goes through, the sellers control the price for the entire session. Um, the shadows, as I said before, are um, extending from the real body to the highest of session. So what long shadows mean is that there was a lot of fluctuation during the session. So if there's a long shadow here, let's take this one. Um, we had an overall decrease, uh, increase during the session, but during it, it went down a lot. Uh, spinning tops. Spinning tops are candlesticks with uh, small real bodies and uh, long shadows. This shows lots of instability, because you can tell there's a bunch of fluctuation, but not much change. Uh, doji are like spinning tops, but they have even smaller realize sometimes that they're, they're exactly the same. And they're, they're really hallmarks of instability. So uh, if you see a doji after like a long advance or long downtrend, uh, you can safely say that there might be a reversal. It's not definite, but. Okay, so like I just said, you can see a doji right after a long white candlestick. So if you see a large increase, but then a bunch of fluctuation with no actual change, you can tell that either the buyers are uh, putting as much pressure as they were before, or the sellers are putting more. So either way, there's either going to—it's not—it's not, it's not going to keep uh, increasing. Uh, Long-legged doji. These are even more significant than normal doji because while the price isn't changing very much, the fluctuation before the close is changing even even more. So that's really it's step unstable and can show uh, more change. Okay, one-sided doji. So this is Dragonfly and Gravestone Doji. As you can see, they look like a, like T's and outside out T's. This is called a Dragonfly Doji because it looks like a dragonfly. Basically, what it is is when the high open and close, uh, the high open and yeah, high open and close are all in the same place. So that means that it started at one point, never went higher than that, just kept going down and then went back up to the same place. What that means is um, like, let's say you have that at the end of a large downtrend, you can tell there's gonna be a reversal because technically the reversal's already started. It goes up, down, and then back up. Thanks. The same thing is true for a gravestone doji. If you have a uh, gravestone doji at the end of a large advance, it's going up, keeps going up, and then comes right back down. So you can tell there's gonna be a reversal. Uh, hammer and Hanging Man. Hammer and Hanging Man look actually the exact same except for the colors. The difference between them is what happens before. So a hammer is bullish. So it's, it comes at the end of a long uh, downward trend, and then it goes back up. And the hanging man comes at the end of a large upward trend, and comes back down. So I gave a better examples here. 
So you can see the hammer is at the end of this long downward trend. Then it goes down and then back up like this, right? And the hanging man comes up and there's a bit of fluctuation, it comes back down. Uh, the shortcomings of candlestick graphs. Candlestick uh, graphs don't tell you everything. So here's a, an example of a, so one candlestick. And it gives you two things which could possibly happen. So basically what it's telling you is you don't know all the fluctuations that happen in between the highs and lows. Uh, candlesticks and how they relate to prior trends. So the prior, tr like you can't just look at one candlestick in a graph and expect to know everything that's gonna happen in the future, you have to look at the past. So I give a pretty good example here. Let's say you're following a blue chip stock like Google. Google is a pretty stable stock. I'm gonna go back. Right. You're following a blue chip stock like Google, it's pretty stable. So if you see a doji, which means there hasn't been any change in the price, that doesn't necessarily mean there's gonna be like a big reversal. That could just mean it's continuing to be stable. Uh, start position. Start position is when um, the next candlestick uh, starts in a different place than the last one. So let's say uh, on a close of one day is $14 and then on the open of the next day is $30, which is not going to happen, but that would be a start position. The Harami position is like the start position, uh, but the, the second candlestick is inside of the balance of the first. What, what this actually means depends on where it is. Like, if this candlestick is at the top here, that, that, uh, that is inferring that it's going to go down. If it's at the top, bottom here, it's going to go up. Reversal candlestick graphs. I've talked about uh, reversals a lot. Basically, reversals is a change in the overall trend of where the graph is going. So if a graph has a downward trend, a reversal will be start going up. And if it's going up, a reversal will start going down. Uh, shadows and the effects of the So I talked about this when I was talking about the hanging man. Basically, when it's going in a certain direction and you have a shadow at the end, that means the reversal has already happened. It's gone down and then started going back up again. So that's how you can tell um, a reversal is going to happen before it really does. Uh, or candlesticks. So here we have the inverted hammer and the shooting star. Uh, you can use these in the same way we use the normal hammer and hanging man, just um, inversely. So you can have an inverted hammer uh, at the end of a large downtrend, and that means it's going to go up, and a shooting star at the end of a large uptrend will mean it's going to start going down. Uh, this is just the same thing, as, but for shooting star. Okay. Uh, blending candlesticks. You can take two candlesticks and merge them. The rules for that are you take uh, the open of the first candlestick, the close of the second candlestick. You can tell this is the open because for uh, black candlesticks, the open's on the top, and the close is on the top for the white one. So you take the open of the first one and the close of the second one, that's the open and close for the thing. And you just take the largest shadows. And we have another example here. Um, basically, if there aren't, like, if they aren't the same color, like this is black and this is white, then we have engulfing. And basically, if it's bullish or bearish engulfing, it depends on the color of the end graph. Uh, summary of candlestick graphs. Basically, candlestick graphs are really t uh, good at showing you instability in like the short term. If you know something um, is going to change, like right, like in the next few weeks or something, right? So like right here, you can see this is a signal of change. And you can tell it's going to go up after this, but you don't know what's all going to happen here from this. So, um, but they don't uh, show all the fluctuations in between. So those are the good and bad things of candlestick graphs. Thanks for listening, guys. All right.